بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلی علی وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد ایو الحبہ It's no mystery to any of us that Islam encourages brotherhood and that we should love one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that as a community we should strengthen one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because we are the Islamic brotherhood we should be illustrating for the rest of creation what true brotherhood is and we should be a source of guidance and light for the rest of the world community you know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that kuntu, kuntum ummatin kuntum khayran ummatin ukhrijat lin nas that you were the you were the best ummah that has come forth from the people for mankind ta'maruna bil ma'ruf wa tanhauna anil munkar that you command the good and you forbid the evil so ayyullah habba, if we can illustrate this, move away from our sins and begin to unite our hearts based on kitab illa wa sunnat rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then we can move forward as a community. We can rectify the condition of where we're being oppressed. We can remove some of the humiliation from our community. And we can gain the help of Allah by uniting on the correct path. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ هَذَا صَرَاتِ مُسْتَقِيمٍ فَاعْتَبِيُوا لَا تَعْتَبِيُوا سُبُرٍ That verily, this is my straight path. This is my straight path. So do not follow the various paths. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to follow the straight path. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to be brothers. إِنَّمَا مُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَى Verily, the believers are brothers. So ayyala habba, that brotherhood which unites us and unites our heart is imperative to preserve. And along with that ayyala habba, I want to mention something very important, especially for Ahl Sunnah, but for the Ummah in general, is that we should be careful, we should have good thoughts about one another. Especially those people who are known for straightness. To be, they're known for being on the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that you should make excuses for them when you see something that might be questionable that you should first and foremost try to put it in a positive light before you jump immediately and say oh I, I know that what they were doing was haram or it was a bid'ah or this but first you should put a good light upon it first before you speculate in the bad of idham verily having suspicion some of it is, is, is a, a, a serious sin. The Prophet ﷺ said, hadith. You know, beware of suspicion. For verily, it is the worst of speech. Because ayyuhal habba, whenever we have this negative outlook towards one another and, pes and being pessimistic, that it almost always, it isn't reserved to our thought, but we always spread that. We say, oh, brother so-and-so is like this. I heard so-and-so say this uh, in a video. I heard so-and-so say this in a tape. I heard so-and-so in a lecture say this, and what they meant was this. You know, always looking to the to the negative. But ayyuhallah habba, be cautious of that, because the Prophet sallallahu warned us against that. That's what destroys brotherhood, and that destroys brotherhood between Ahl Sunnah is instead of having the husn al dhan that the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah encourage us to have, we jump immediately and read into other people's statements and take the worst reading of it. That doesn't mean, ayu al habba, however, that we don't look and warn and avoid the mistakes of individuals. And, the, and people are of two categories with regards to this, uh, as far as Muslims. The first category, is the category of the believer that is from Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So in this case, if the brother or sister has made a mistake, then you should advise them and you should refute their mistake, correct it for them, help them, help them with that or make it, call it to their attention. Maybe they didn't mean to, maybe it was a slip of the tongue, what have you. Maybe they have knowledge of it, but it was a slip of the tongue or maybe they just made a mistake, they need correction in that. But you maintain 
respect and their status. You don't try to belittle them. And the second category of people is the people who are known, their asl, their foundation in their religion is from bid'ah. That all, they, they are a whole sect. Perhaps they are one of the hezbiyun of the various types of groups and sects. They could be from Akhwan Muslimin as their foundation in their understanding in the religion. They could be from uh, Jamaat Tabliq, Musururiyun, or they could even be from other pure sects. They could be Ashari. They could be uh, some various Sufi sect, that, like the Ahbash, or any of these other groups that are deviant in their Aqidah and in their methodology in understanding Islam. So Ayyullah Habba, in this case, it is not necessary to necessarily maintain their respect and status. However, do not go beyond the bounds. That you must have balance because maybe Allah will guide them. And maybe Allah will guide them and they will become your brothers fully. Meaning that they will be practicing the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and calling to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Madhab of the Salaf of this Ummah. So Ayyullah Habba, we have to have a balance. This is what the this is the scale of Ahl Sunnah. And it's the Minhaj and Nabuwa. It's the, the, the prophetic methodology that we have to have balance. That we do not do this let mistakes. That is not from brotherhood just to keep letting someone fall into bid'ah or keep letting someone uh, fall into mistakes and sins and not advise them. And it is not from balance and being just to allow mistakes and bid'ah to be carried around the community and not speak out against it. That's not from justice. That's not from kindness. That's not from real unity. And this is what we have to understand, Ayyul Habba, because some of our brothers and sisters, they become angry and they attack us because they believe we're trying to split the Ummah. But in fact, Ahl Sunnah is trying to unite the Ummah, but unite the Ummah based on the Quran and the Sunnah and the Madhab of the Salaf. It isn't sufficient that we just all come together, but yet we truly believe completely different in our, our, on how to establish Islam. Because that never in the history of Islam was that permissible. So we cannot allow that to happen now because it will not be successful. Because Allah does not help, is not going to help the grave worshiper and the one who calls to extremism and, and killing people and shedding their blood without the right to do so. And the one who declares other Muslims to be uh, disbelievers without the right to do so. And those people who are extreme and those people who are calling to the madhab, the salaf of this ummah and striving to be upon it. They're, they're on something different. They're going in different ways. The only way you can unite them, unite them is bring them together on the straight path. Verily, this is my straight path. So follow it and do not follow the subu, subu uh, the diff different paths. And the Prophet Wasallam said in this regard, as it, as it was narrated, So the Prophet Wasallam drew a mark in the sand. On the right, and he did on the left. The first khat, he said, This is the path of Allah, the first path, the straight one. And then he said, He said, Those are the various paths. And at the head of each one of those paths is a shaitan. So there's no way that you can get together and unify the community based on innovation. It has to be based on Kitabi Law wa Sunnatul Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we ask Allah the Almighty to bless us to be upon Kitabi Law wa Sunnatul Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the Madhab of the Sahaba, Radiallahu Ta'ala Anu Majma'in. Wa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala Alihi wa Sahbihi wa Sallam.